Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Paul, an international medical graduate. MCCQ1 is the first exam and one of the criteria for applying residency training in Canada. We all know about MCCQ1 examination, but still there are few practical points of view that we need to be aware of before entering the Promatic Center. You will not find those in MCC websites, but very important to successfully pass the exam and to get a decent score. That's what I'm gonna discuss in this video. If you are interested what resources I used for my Q1 exam, check the link in the description below. And also please subscribe to my channel and like the video if you find it helpful. Let's start off. So MCCQ1 examination is a one day computer based test, two sessions exam, morning and afternoon. And the score ranging from 100 to 400 with pass mark 226. In morning session, there will be 210 multiple choice questions with 35s are pylon that don't count towards the total score. In exam, it is not possible to identify those pilot questions. So I think it's better to forget about that. And the total duration would be four hours. And for the afternoon session, there would be 38 clinical decision making questions. Eight questions are pilot. As I said earlier, forget about that. And the total duration three and a half hours. Question pattern of MCQ. It is said that MCCQ1 assesses the critical medical knowledge and clinical decision making ability of a candidate. Do you think that's all? The answer is no. Why? Because it also assesses candidates concentration, focus, patience, time management, handling stress, all these things, not only medical knowledge. The success of this exam depends on your medical knowledge, continuous concentration, and focus throughout the 8-9 hours duration of the exam. For diagnosis, MCC will ask questions like, which of the following is most likely diagnosis, most appropriate diagnosis, most likely cause, something like that. For investigation, which of the following is most helpful, which of the following is most appropriate initial investigation, and for the management, which of the following is the most appropriate management or appropriate treatment, best next step, plus questions on ethics and population health, as I said in my experience video. Is there any break in these four hours? Frankly speaking, the answer is no. Though MCC didn't say that you cannot take the break, but if you take the break for washroom or have some snacks, definitely you will not be able to answer at least 8 to 10 questions. When you will enter or exit the room in Promatic Center, there's a lot of security check each time and the Promatic staff will not consider that you are losing your time. So keep that in your mind. But if you feel exhausted and like this, definitely take 1 to 2 minutes of break, close your eyes and stay at the desk. I did like that and it helped me a lot. Now it's your choice, what would you do? What should be my pace during MCQ? So the pace should be counting each hour. If we divide the 210 questions into 4, the aim should be around 52 to 53 questions. But the last 2 hours, especially the last 1 hour would be different from the first 2 hours, considering the stress and focus. So in my point of view, the aim should be around answering 60 questions per hour for the first 2 hours. We never know there might be very easy questions waiting at the end. We don't want to miss those, right? What do you think? Comment down below. There is 45 minutes break between MCQ and starting of CDM Perl. At that time you can do whatever you like, but make sure that you are in front of the computer when 45 minutes is over, otherwise you will lose your time. Question pattern of CDM. As I said earlier, there would be 38 clinical decision questions and each will consist of 1-3 to three short menu questions and few you have to write in. So there would be around 60 to 70 questions overall and you will have enough time to answer those. You can also move back and forth while answering the questions like you answered question 1 but while answering the question 3 you decided to change the answer of question 1, you can do that. MCQ questions are very straightforward, but CDMs are like the way we face in a hospital admitted patients. What I'm trying to mean is, say a patient admitted to the hospital with a particular symptoms or combination of symptoms. 
MCC will ask what are the differential diagnoses you are considering. Then lab value imaging study shows this, this, this. How would you treat this patient? Then next day when you are on follow-up and find a particular change of symptoms or vitals, then how would you manage this patient? This is one of the many ways of asking CDM questions. How to respond to CDM questions? Short menu questions. A short menu is similar to MCQ questions, but instead of presenting a list of five possible answers, a short menu offers a list of 10 to 20, even 30 options. You may be asked to select only one of these options or select up to a specific number like up to five or select as many as appropriate. So when it says as many as appropriate, like there are 10 options and you think all 10 options are appropriate and choose those, this is wrong. Maybe three, four options are correct. If you choose more than that, you will lose a credit. Or if you choose the options, those were not the correct answers, you will also lose your credit. So be careful about that. Writing questions. Writing questions ask you to type in your answer. This is the same like how many options you can write. If you exit the number of options, you will lose your credit. So that's all for today. All the best for the upcoming exam. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below on what topic you want me to make a video. Till then, stay connected. Thanks for watching.